In 1950, Las Vegas was booming. Tourists from all around the world flocked to experience the mesmerizing spectacle and all it had to offer. It was the definitive American tourist trap. 2,000 miles across the country on the border of South North Carolina, a local businessman named Alan Schaefer was opening a beer stand that would grow to become America's largest Mexican-themed roadside attraction south of the border. In some ways, Alan Schaefer was the advertising genius who never had the chance to go into big business. I think a lot of other people who research roadside culture look at him as being this maverick who created something completely unique. Mr. Schaefer says that one night this plush salesman came by and he didn't have enough gas to get where he was going, so he bought, he bought all the little stuffed animals and stuff that he had and put them on a the shelf in the restaurant and folks started buying them. And you know, south of the border has evolved from that 18 by 36 foot beer stand. I think at south of the border they take kitsch and they expand it into a lifestyle, really. I love it. Every time I come down this way, it's the first place we stop. You gotta go here. It's so great. It's like tacky and like cheap, colorful, decaying. Just always packed full of tourists. I know somebody's making some money here. I don't know who it is, but where we come up with the place, got it going on. Well, there's a lot of legends going around. In 1948, the Klan was actually singling out Alan Schaefer and the, the Schaefer Distributing Company. They were marching and threatening him, and he went out with the rifle and the father. I know if I was really scheduled to go 30 miles away from here. Everyone I've ever talked to in South Carolina clearly and deeply believes I-95 goes straight through south of the border because Alan Schaefer used his political clout. By the time he's, he's involved in, in the election irregularities, the South Carolina Democratic Party is having its meetings at south of the border. It has been said that he took a fall for other individuals, but he was depicted as being behind a political machine. He was the mastermind behind this, this election fraud. He loved this place and he had other businesses, but he ultimately made this his baby and he lived and dreamed it and created it. He loved the play of the word SOB because he was deaf.